It's, it's using the definition of derivative when there's all kinds of shortcuts that you're going to end up using. Okay? But shortcuts don't work for everything, and that's why we have to have that. Because if I try to go backwards and teach you that after I teach you the shortcuts, you know, you're going to be like, no, I don't want to know that. I don't want, you know, you shut off completely. Okay, so sorry. I have to do that to you. So section 3.3, um, we'll do this over two days. So half of it today, half of it tomorrow. We're going to start talking about some rules for differentiation. What does differentiation mean again? Finding derivatives, slow, bright, all these interchangeable words that we now know, they're the same thing. So we're going to today look at positive integer powers, multiple sums and differences. Tomorrow, we're going to look at products and quotients, negative integer powers, um, and then second and higher order derivatives will kind of be thrown in throughout. Okay, so it will be split up, the products and the quotients, there's a lot of places for mistakes. And in order to do these, you have to know these. So it's kind of good for you to take some time on the first day, make sure you know it before we hop in to the products of the quotients. Okay? So here we go. If f is the function with a constant value c, then the derivative of f is the same as the derivative of c, which is 0. Now, this means that the derivative of every constant function, constant is a number, right, is zero. Now, let me make sense of this to you, because I don't want to just teach you a rule and you not then understand why it's that. In other words, if f of x is just a number, a constant, isn't this the same as y equals 5? If I draw that function out, isn't that a horizontal line at 5? Isn't this that graph? What is the slope of that line? What did we just say the derivative of a constant was? <laughs> Zero. Because if you think of it using the right side of your brain, it's because the slope of that line is 0 because it's referring to a horizontal line. Do you guys ever get mixed up about the slope of a horizontal line and the slope of a vertical line? Everybody's good with that? You remember the slope of a horizontal line is zero? Because when I was in high school, when I was a freshman in high school, I got it mixed up all the time. So I have a way to remember if you need it. But I don't have much here. All right. If n is a positive integer, then if you have x to the n power, in other words, something like this, right? x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, you know, anything like that. Then the derivative of it is this number out front and subtract one from the exponent. Yesterday we took, I think it was yesterday, no it wasn't yesterday, the day before, and we found the derivative of x squared and it came out to 2x. We didn't have to go through the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. We could have just used this little shortcut. So what if f of x is x to the 7th? What would the derivative be? 7x to the 6th. Right? Who needs that ball say? Right? We will be doing that long way again, though, so happy no, no worries there. You won't forget it. What do you think? Yes. Okay. So he's already asking about the higher order derivatives, which is in this section. So perfect. I'm going to do this. We talked about that, how we would put two tick marks, right? Then this multiplies out front, 42 and subtract 1. Same rule. It's just that there's already a number out front, and so we're going to multiply by it, which is actually what the next rule is. Okay. So we jumped ahead of the gun a little bit on that, but that's okay. Inquiring minds wanted to know. Right? So here, then, is the third shortcut rule. If u is a differentiable function of x and c is a constant, then if you have a constant times the function, 
then it's like pulling the constant out front, they say, and then taking the derivative of the function. But quite honestly, I do not expect you to say 7 times 6x to the 5th and then write 42x to the 5th. So you could just know that it's just going to multiply out front by 10. Okay. Are we doing good so far? Don't you like these shortcut rules? They're super nice. If u and v are differentiable functions of x, then their sum and differences are differentiable at every point. Whoa. At every point where u and v are differentiable. So in other words, if you have two separate functions that are being added, you could take the derivative of the first, and then if it's a plus sign, it stays a plus sign. If it's a minus sign, it stays a minus sign. And then you take the derivative of the second. So in other words, 5x squared minus 2x. We found derivatives of those already using the long method, and they got really ugly. And sometimes we messed up on, you know, multiplying the 5 and the negative 2 and that sort of thing through it. But the shortcut, very easy. 2 times 5, 10. Knock it down by 1. But you really don't need the 1 there. Okay? There's a 1 here. 1 times 2, 2. Knock it down by 1, it becomes 0. Anything to the zero power is just one, right? So once it knocks it down to nothing, you don't need to write it. And so 10x minus 2. What if I would have had a plus 3 on the end? What's the derivative of 3? Zero. So again, I wouldn't have anything else on the end. What do you think? Feel okay? Yes. The first rule, boop, right there. Derivative of a number is zero. Okay. And you'll use that a lot. Many of our terms have like a plus five, plus seven, minus two, whatever at the end. So then when you take the derivative of it, it just falls off. Yeah. Just scroll down to the third. Yeah. You done with that one? Are you done with that one? Okay. Oops. Two, three. This one right here. Right? Okay. So let's use those rules now. Okay. Let's kind of throw them together in different um, equations, just like this last one that I just did right here. Does everybody have the rules written down? I don't want to slide past them. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. So here we go. It says differentiate the polynomial y equals x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 3 fourths x minus 19. Differentiate means to find dy dx or to find y prime, right? They all mean the same thing. All right, so let's see. What's the derivative of x to the fourth? What do you think? You got it, 4x to the third. And what's the derivative of 2x squared? 4x, very good. What is the derivative of negative 3 fourths x? Negative 3 fourths, good. And what's the derivative of negative 19? Zero. Zero. And there's our answer. So, it's very easy. You know, as long as you know those little shortcuts, you can find it just like that. That's why I said you get to really learn calculus. You get to learn the shortcuts of it, you know. And so it's easy. It becomes very simple. Calculus is not necessarily hard. It's just when it's different rules for all the different functions, like logarithms and exponentials don't have these same rules. So you have to learn different rules for those as well. Okay? Questions so far? This picks up on tomorrow, so that's it for today. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Should we? Let's let's just let's dive in a little bit. Let's just do this one, <laughs> okay? Just to let it sink in a little bit. All right. The product of two. So we did the sum of two when you add them together. What about when they're multiplied? 
when they are multiplied, that means it's not just taking the derivative of each one. Yes, you're going to do that, but there are other parts you need as well. So this is what your book has as the rule. The first one stays the same. You take the derivative of the second one, multiply those together, and then you add. So product gets a plus sign. The second one stays the same, and you take the derivative of the first. This is what our book says. But I will tell you, I use this instead. And the reason is, is because when I go to show you the quotient, the quotient uses it this way, not that way. So rather than learn two different things, it's easiest to keep them the same if you can. Some textbooks use this, some textbooks use this. So it's not like a rule written in stone that it has to be in a certain order. I take the derivative of the first one and multiply by the second, <coughs> and then the plus sign, and then I take the first one and keep it the same and multiply by the derivative of the second. Do you see how mine has this one last and this one first? All I'm doing is going like this. Isn't 2 plus 5 and 5 plus 2 the same thing? So it's the same rule. But when we get to the quotient rule tomorrow, it has to be in this order. It can't be in that order because all of a sudden there's a minus sign, not a plus sign. So then it does make a difference. 5 minus 2 and 2 minus 5 are not the same thing. So rather than do it one way for one and the other way for the other, I like to just keep it the same and make it easier for you. So here, it says find f prime of x, that's the derivative, right? If the first term is x cubed minus 4, and the second term is x squared plus 3. I'm going to show you two things to do on this one. All right, so to find f prime, it says, and I'm going to do it my way, all right? I really think it's better for you to do it that way. Take the derivative of the first parenthesis. What's the derivative of x cubed minus 4? 3x squared. Derivative of 4 is 0, right? So that's all I have for that. Times the second one, x squared plus 3. So that one stays the same. And then a plus sign. Now this time, the first one is going to stay the same, but I'm leaving a space to put the derivative of this. So what's the derivative of x squared plus 3? 2x. Okay, now, they will want you to use your algebra skills. <laughs> That's where sometimes we mess up. Um, to simplify this. Okay, it's supposed to be simple, simplify, right? But sometimes we have so much focus on the calculus end of things, we just like are not so careful on the algebra, so just be careful, please. So this distributes, we get 3x to the 4th plus 9x squared. This distributes to both of these. So I get plus 2x to the 4th minus 8x. If any of those combine together, you want to combine them together. And these two here do. So I get 5x to the 4th plus 9x squared minus 8x. So the derivative of this it took steps in order to get to it. So it's not quite as easy as just addition or just having a single term. Right? When we multiply, there is a process we have to go through. So then, is anybody going to ask the question? You should. I wouldn't mark you off. AP's not going to mark you off for that. Okay. All right. Now, anybody going to ask a question? Is anybody wondering something? Is there another way that we could do it? So, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Some people say, well, Mrs. Lemon, why can't I just foil these first and then take the derivative? You could. Okay, so let's look at it. There are times, whoops, 
there are times that that is shorter and there are times that that is longer. So you're not always going to want to do it, but I want you to believe me that it works. So, you know, I want you to gain some faith in me with this. So if I FOIL this first times first, I get x to the fifth. Outside, I get plus 3x cubed. Inside, I get minus 4x squared. And last, I get minus 12, right? That's just foiling. That's just algebra. Now, let's find the derivative of that. It's no longer written as products. It's written as sums and differences. So that means I can find the derivative of each individual term. Derivative of x to the fifth is... Derivative of 3x cubed is derivative of negative 4x squared is and derivative of negative 12 is zero. Do my answers match? So can you do that? Yes, you can. Okay. However, these are just two binomials. What happens when you have a binomial and a trinomial? it's not as easy to multiply those out. And that's where sometimes the product rule is maybe the better way to go. So know that you can do it either way. You just need to show me your work for which way you do it. Okay? When we get to some of the other identities as well, some of the other parent functions with logarithms, exponentials, fractions, you know, uh, sine, cosine, tangent, you know, because we're going to look at all of those. They each have their own family of rules to them. And you'll find on many of those that the product rule is the shorter way to go. Okay, but with polynomials, two binomials, I think maybe the shortest way is to multiply them together. Okay, so I do like to show you, if there's more than one way to do something, I like to show you both ways so that you can kind of latch onto the way that you like the best, knowing you have the other as the backup. Okay. So let's do the product rule. We'll do both. Okay. This would be the last one, I promise. If I use the product rule, I start with the derivative of the first, which is what? 5x to the fourth. Where the second stays the same, right? I guess my line needs to move over a little bit. And then plus, this time the first one stays the same, and I take the derivative of the second. Derivative of x to the fourth is? Good. And derivative of negative 2x is? Minus 2. And derivative of 3 is? 0. And distribute about my terms. Algebra. From here down, it's algebra. The only thing we did calculus at that point was using a product rule taking a derivative of each term. Okay, but now we're done with the calculus. Now we move on to algebra. So we distribute 5x to what power? Eight, right, same base, add exponents. 5x to the fourth times negative 2x. Negative 10x to the fifth, good. 5x to the fourth times 3? And then we distribute the x to the fifth over here. So plus 4x to the eighth minus 2x to the fifth. If there are like terms, you combine them. 9x to the eighth minus 12x to the fifth plus 4x to the eighth. What do we think? Not too bad, right? All right, now let's do it the other way. What if we're a rebel? We like algebra. What, did I write something wrong? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> it's that one that's supposed to be written. <laughs> 15x to the 4th. Yeah, I looked up and my eyes, my eyes went to the wrong thing there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> They would not have matched, would they? <laughs> right? All right, so if I start by distributing, same base, I add the exponents. 
x to the fifth times negative 2x to the fourth is negative 2x to the sixth. x to the fifth times 3, 3x to the fifth. Right? So that's f of x. We haven't done the derivative yet. So now when we do the derivative, you come out front, knock it down by 1. You come out front, knock it down by 1. You come out front, knock it down by 1. All right, so at least you see the product rule. Make sure you get to the quotient rule. There's no extra little shortcut for it. That's the toughest. Well, the toughest for now. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> it will get harder. I promise. <laughs>